Hello everybody. We're back once again. I am Tim with Golf Cart Garage. This is our part of our GearHeads on demand service that we provide at Golf Cart Garage where you get to talk with a technician. Uh, we're going to go through some questions like we do every week. Answer some questions, answer some emails, see if we can help some people out, see if we can save them some money. This is Thursday, January the 27th, noon Central Standard Time. We do this every week at this time. So we're glad you could join us this week. Let's get started. Let's see. Question number one. I purchased a voltage reducer for my 2012 Club Car Precedent. I'm trying to find out if there is an adapter I can install on the wiring that makes it a plug and play with the rest of the cart harness. I really don't want to destroy a new headlight or anything by wiring it wrong. It came basically with no wire sticking out of the back that looks like I need to splice into other wires. Okay, if I understand your question correctly, uh, the it, if your car, if your precedent now, if it already has lights, then it already has a voltage reducer on it somewhere. So this voltage reducer would tie into the exact same place as your old one if you're trying to, to do another one. If you don't have lights and you're installing a fresh set of lights with a fresh voltage reducer, my recommendation would be to get an entire wiring harness, get in this, a separate wiring harness that we would that we sell and it would be compatible with your lights. I mean, I, your lights need to be compatible with our wiring harness in order for it to be plug and play at the light connection. Uh, so you need to have the same brand lights that our wiring harness is, or you could, you, you could modify it and, and plug the wires into where they're supposed to be or splice into our wiring harness. That would be the easiest way to accomplish what you're doing. Keep it completely separate from the wiring harness that's already in the car. All right, let's see. Number two, my club car 2006 golf cart goes very slow after a full charge. It lasts for more than a whole round of golf. I have two new batteries and two batteries that are two years old. They are almost putting out 12 amps. I was reading online that it could be a speed sensor or magnet that is causing the issue and the cart defaults to eight miles an hour. Is this correct and should I buy both items? It seems like an easy fix. Speed sensor or a magnet. All right. Okay. The, the speed sensor is the magnet. It's not actually two items. That's just one item. A speed sensor on the end of your motor is a magnet. It's an electronic device with a magnet in it. So that's, that's one item. Uh, now, let me... Uh, let me explain the symptoms of a bad speed sensor and you, you decide whether or not you think it's that route or not. Uh, a bad speed sensor, you would get on your golf cart, uh, on a club car like yours, you would get on it, take off, and it would take off normally and everything would go and you got your foot on the floor and you go less than probably like 10 yards and it just doom, it drops down to about 2 miles an hour and just continues to crawl even though your foot's on the floor. That's a very common uh, symptom of a bad speed sensor. Now, if that's not what your car is doing, then you might want to look elsewhere. I don't like the fact that you have mismatched gear batteries in there, and I know I'm a stickler for battery reading, so I would actually want you to get a load test on your batteries. Make sure that they're fine. Uh, make sure that they pass a load test, uh, a complete battery load test, not just load test on each individual battery. I'm talking about the whole pack. I would want to see that. And then after that point, uh, we, we could address the eight miles an hour thing that you're talking about because it, it could be speed sensor, but uh, the most common symptom is one I described. It didn't really sound like what you were describing. Uh, what you're describing kind of sounds like it may be potentiometer uh, problems. Well, let's see. We're going to go to number three. I have a 2000 Yamaha gas golf cart with standard street ready light kit. How do I wire up an extra brake light installed on the back of roof? Can't find anything that shows or tells me how. Any help would be appreciated. Well, there's there's a couple of ways there's a couple of ways you could do that. You could uh, you could tie in to your existing brake lights. 
with the with the third brake light. You could run your wire. You're gonna have a you're gonna have a pot. You know, a hot wire and a ground wire coming from your third brake light. Go down to one of your existing brake lights and tie in to the to the uh, to the hot wire in the ground there. Or you could run the wires from your your third brake light all the way down to your uh, your brake light switch, like somewhere around your gas pedal, there's going to be on your car, there's going to be a brake light switch that activates your brake lights and tells them to come on. You could tie in at the switch if you, if you wanted to, but the closest place, since you're doing it on the back of the roof, would be to tie into one of your existing brake lights, ground and hot wire. Number four. We have an older rebuilt 36 volt easy go with a newer conventional power wise charger. It only sees snowboard snowbird use in Florida. It's been in use about 10 days or so this season. Batteries appear okay. Car runs okay. Charger only runs about an hour and shuts off regardless of amps. It drew 20 amps at start last week. Now with more charging it's in use, it's drawing seven to eight amps at whatever current. It shuts down after about one hour. Is this a control board problem? Well, let's talk about the normal operation of in your electrical system with a power wise charger. Normal operation would be this. You plug it into the car, it jumps up to about 20 amps, and then slowly drops, slowly, throughout the night, gets close to zero, probably around four amps or something, and sits there for an hour or two, and then boom, shuts off. And that, that all takes place over a series of hours. You know, it takes hours for that to complete. That would be normal operation. Now, while that is going on, while that, while that needle is slowly dropping throughout the night, the voltage in your battery pack is going up. It's rising. The needle's dropping and the voltage is rising. What I would want to see, to see if your charger is doing everything that, it, that it's supposed to, I would want you to get a battery reading off of, those batter, off of your battery pack while that charger is down close to zero before it shuts off. It needs to still be running, but I want to see, I want to see what the voltage is in your batteries while that charger is getting close to shutting off. On a 36 volt car like yours, the voltage in your batteries should be up to at least 46 volts, maybe even 48, before the charger shuts off. So that's what I would want to see to see if your charger's actually working like it should. Now you could do that yourself. You know, that's, uh, to just check your voltage at the batteries at the toward the end of the charge cycle before it shuts off, and that that should be somewhere where the needle is getting close to zero you know, before it shuts off. And if that if that's not normal, if that doesn't if that's not what's happening with you, then I would suspect that you do have a charger problem. All right, number five is from Larry C. How do you feel about lithium batteries for electric golf carts? I like the reviews on the Dakota lithium batteries. What's your take on them? Well, I can't say enough. I can't say enough good things about lithium batteries. The, the whole thing about them is power to weight ratio. I mean, uh, I don't know if you're we're paying attention to the tool market like about five to ten years ago, like when all the tool batteries became available in lithium. It just completely revamped all the cordless tool industries and all these companies like Ryobi and Milwaukee and DeWalt. They all came out with all these different tools that just weren't possible anymore with conventional batteries. At that time they were using uh, nickel metal cadmium batteries and they, it just wasn't possible because the battery itself just wasn't powerful enough to run some of these more these amp drawing tools. Well, as soon as that hit the market, it just revamped the tool industry. Well, it's the same thing in a golf cart. You, you lose a tremendous amount of weight when you, when you do a lithium conversion, uh, up to 300 pounds, depending on which conversion you choose, and then you gain a more powerful battery that's running the same electrical system that it that your old batteries were. So a more powerful battery, not necessary, not higher voltage, just more powerful means that you're going to have less sag in whatever device you're running. Like if you like, uh, they didn't really have uh, electric blowers before lithium batteries hit the tool market. Well, the reason is a blower pulls a lot of juice out of a battery. 
You know, that was only possible after they came out with lithium. Now, now there's all kinds of electric blowers. There's electric blowers and electric weed eaters. Well, golf carts pull a lot of juice out of, out of the regular, that's why the battery pack, the lead acid battery pack is so huge and so substantial all these years because it takes a very powerful battery. Well, with, the, with lithium nowadays, it's completely different, completely changed. It, it just flipped the script. I mean, now it's, they're lighter and more powerful. So your golf cart will not only feel like it has more power, it, it really doesn't. One of those things is that it's, well, it does have more power, but it's, one of the reasons is because it lost so much weight to begin with, and it has a more powerful battery, so there's less voltage sag when you hit the, gap, when you hit the accelerator pedal. So, do am I a fan of lithium batteries? Yes, I am. So, and and you wouldn't be disappointed. Let's see, number six. I have a '96 DS gas. I'm sure I need belts. Are there different grades of belts? It will run down the road and all of a sudden backfire on its own. Uh, it may do it again down the road. Uh, down the road a bit. Ideas. Okay, Fred. O. I actually remember talking with Fred on the phone about this, about this issue uh, this past week. Uh, there are there are different belts. You can you can get a standard belt, you know, which is just a standard replacement, or you can get a heavy duty belt. We we sell both here at Golf Cart Garage. Obviously, a heavy duty belt is going to be a little bit more expensive. Uh, now, as far as your backfiring issue, there could be there could be several issues uh, causing a cart to backfire. One that I've seen is when you go down a hill, and we're talking about gas carts here. So when you when you go downhill, your you know your tendency a lot of times, depending if it's a big hill, you you, you take your foot off the accelerator pedal, okay, because your car's you know is kind of freewheeling a little bit. So you tend to take your foot off of the accelerator pedal. Well, if your carburetor is not set correctly, you take your foot off of your accelerator pedal. The car's still rolling down the hill. The fuel pump is still being activated. It continues to pump fuel into the carburetor. If your needle and seat is not quite closing, it will pump fuel past the carburetor into the cylinder, and as soon as you hit your gas pedal again, boom, it ignites it in a backfire. Now that's one of the one of the ways that the car can backfire. Another way is just all having to do with the needle and seat and the float bowl. The float bowl float and the needle and seat could not be shutting off for some reason and allowing gas to escape when you're not when you're not burning the gas, like in other words, you don't have your foot on the accelerator pedal. So one of the ways you could do, one of the things that I think Fred and I talked about was like spraying some carburetor cleaner through the carburetor while the car is running and see if that makes any difference whatsoever. See if, see if it might knock out something that might be clogging it or restricting the fuel flow because it's definitely some type of fuel delivery problem that causing backfires. Let's see, number seven. Seventy nine to eighty one G one gas two cycle engine runs smooth or not at all unless it's running at or near full throttle. What do I need to do? At full throttle it runs nice. Well the I've said it before, Yamaha G one gas is a very good golf cart. Uh, probably the best golf cart ever made, in my opinion. Uh, it's uh, one of the most common issues with any old two-stroke golf cart that starts running bad. It's kind of like with an electric cart, I always say, I always eliminate batteries uh, first as being the problem of whatever your symptom is. I always eliminate your battery pack first. Well, in Yamaha G1s, the first thing that you need to eliminate, considering that they're so old, the newest one that you could possibly have would be an 89. So considering that they're that old, the first thing you need to eliminate is crank seals. Because when the crank seals go, it messes with your air to fuel ratio and changes all those settings. So your crank seals need to be good. That's one of the most common things and crank seals wear out over time. Uh, check your compression. Make sure your compression is good and your crank seals. That would be the two things that I would, that I would be trying uh, to check on but to, that could be causing your problems. Let's see. My 2014 club car is plugged into the 15 amp regular garage plug. We have been asked if we can use a 20 amp plug. Can we? Uh, 
Sure you can. Yeah. If I'm understanding your question right, I mean, you're talking about just a regular outlet that you plug in your, your charger in, in your garage. It's a 15 amp outlet. And you want to know if you can plug it into another amp that's a 20 amp outlet. See, that's not actually, your outlet is not really putting out anything. It's just a heavier duty outlet that's protecting uh, for heavy loads. So the answer is yes, you could plug it into a 20 amp outlet. That, that would be fine. It would work just fine. This is number nine. I'm looking at a used Western golf cart that uses seven batteries, but has a very noisy charger. Is this silent? If I changed carts and went to 48, could it be changed to output 48? Well, I didn't get the, you said, where well, you said, is this silent? I'm sure that you, I was supposed to have a link to a charger that we sell. Uh, if, if that was, then if it's a solid state charger that you were asking about, is it silent? The answer is yes, it would be a silent, it would be silent charger. I'm familiar with Westerns with the seven battery configuration. That's a 42 volt Western. Western is a company that used an easy go to, to make a cart out of. It's based off an easy go frame but they made a 42 volt system instead of a 36 volt system that was seven six volt batteries. Uh, there's a lot of them out there and, uh, it, and just remember when you're buying a charger, ask if it's solid state, that would make it, uh, uh, that would make it silent. Uh, as far as uh, changing it to 48 volts, well, you're gonna have to look at the controller and see what controller's in it to see if the controller's rated for 48 volts. To change a car to 48 volts, like that Western, you would need to change the controller to a controller that's compatible with 48 volts and the solenoid to a, a solenoid that has a, a 48 volt activation coil. Uh, that would be the two major things that you would have to change. Everything else would probably be fine, including the motor. Uh, you can hit a 36 volt motor. In fact, the Westerns I've seen, they had a 36 volt motor in them and they were running on 42 volts. They, they're a little faster than normal golf cars. That's why people kind of liked them. But you can take that all the way up to 48 on that stock motor, usually, without any issues at all. So you got to change the solenoid. you got to change the controller on a 48 to, to convert it up to 48 volts. And get a 48 volt charger. Number 10. Like many, I want to increase the speed of my 2016 precedent. I use it for street use and not on the course. It tops out at about 15 now and slow down on minor grades. What do you recommend? Larger wheels, motor, or all of the above? Well, first you need to be aware that Club Car could just plug in a computer. If you're only doing 15 now, Club Car could plug in their computer and speed you up a little bit uh, to at least 20 or right at 20, 19.6 or something like that. So if if that's enough, that would be the easiest way to get more speed. Now, yeah, of course they're gonna charge you for that. It's just a programming thing that they're gonna to have to do to it. Uh, if, if that's not enough, uh, if you don't think that's going to be enough, then you could go with a, one of the complete combo kits that are available out there that includes a new controller, uh, new motor, and that combined with larger tires is going to increase your speed too. So you could go as fast as you wanted to. I'm just talking about in your current configuration, club car can just plug, plug it, plug it in, hit a couple of buttons and you could be going 20. So you just need to decide if 20 is enough because that's about all you're going to get. If, you know, if 20 is not enough, then you're going to have to spend a lot of money, but it'd be easy uh, and, and less expensive just to hit 20. All right. Number 11 is from Greg J. I have a 2003 Club Car DS48 bolt that just shudders and won't move when I push the accelerator pedal. I have replaced the M core, replaced the main solenoid, checked all wire connections, and the battery voltage is 50.8 with all 24 cells reading 1.270 specific gravity or more at 70 degrees ambient temperature. Still does the shuddering and will not move. Does this sound to be a bad control? You know, I'm, I've probably said this before, but anytime, anytime someone uses the word shutter or stutter when they're, 
uh, describing a, a symptom on their on their electric golf cart it is usually a battery related issue now I, what I mean by battery related could be batteries themselves but you said they all have good specific gravity uh, or one of the cables the main battery cables it could be a cable connecting the batteries together could be those those power cables that are going over to the forward and reverse switch or the or into the controller this is what I would want. I would want to put a, a voltmeter on the battery pack and make the car shutter or stutter while I'm watching the volts and see what happens with the volts during the shutter or stutter. See if they stay if it stays at 50.8 volts and see if it drops way down. If it drops way down, you got a bad battery or a bad cell somewhere. And I know you checked it. I know you checked the specific gravity, but I'm just saying that anytime a shutter or a stutter comes into play. I'm very suspicious about a battery issue. So I, I would still want to eliminate that in some other ways rather than the specific gravity test. Okay, number 12. Easy go, 36 volt. Batteries are hot, light on, no response at pedal. Okay, an easy go 36 volt. So what what light are we talking about? Because an easy go 36 volt does not have a light on the golf cart. So I'm not sure what light we're talking about. Uh, hot batteries could be an indication of overcharging. Uh, it could be an indication of the batteries just getting old and that they're quite sulfated and you're trying to charge them. Uh, so I would have I would have questions about that. I, I, you're, I'd like to know what charger you're using and I'd like to know what you meant by the yellow light because it could be a mismatch. You could have a wrong charger. It could be a 48 volt charger you're trying to charge 36 volt golf cart batteries with or, or, or vice versa. That could cause hot batteries or hot charger. Uh, just I'm going to need to I have a lot of questions. Let's see. Just purchased a new Icon golf cart and need help disconnecting the reverse horn. It is the loudest thing I have heard. Or direct me to where to go do to research this. Well, I know this on the three major brands of golf carts, which is Easy Go, Club Car, and Yamaha. All you have to do on them is you just go find the horn wherever the horn is you should be able to find it you know especially if it's that loud and just disconnect one wire off of it. it's it got two wires on it just disconnect one wire now you need to keep in mind i don't really know how icon does it but on certain easy goes that uh that horn is also the it makes some beeps it makes beep sounds for fault codes so I'm not sure if Icon is going to be that way or not. So if you remove the horn, you might be removing your ability to have beep codes. Or maybe the Icon has some lights on the controller for fault codes. I don't know. I'm just saying keep that in mind whenever you find your the horn to remove a wire from it. What is the high-pitched whining noise I hear when I drive my cart? Okay, well, it could be a number of things depending on what brand car you have and what year it is. I have heard uh, high pitch whine noises coming from club car motors or you know electric motors. I have heard high pitch whine noises coming from Yamaha controllers. There's a Yamaha, a, a, a certain few years of Yamaha where there's a, a noise actually comes from the controller. It can be high pitched. Uh, there's could be in your brake uh, hub you know you could have something that's rubbing that's making so there's it just it could be it could be a number of things depending on which car it is uh, maybe you could jack the car up see a lot of people don't realize this you could jack the, the two wheels up off the ground if you had a floor jack get both the rear wheels off the ground and hit the gas pedal and you know the wheels will turn well you can actually stop one of the wheels and the other one will still turn you can stop it and hold it with your hand because it has an open rear end in a golf cart well sometimes that can help you isolate where noises are coming from in the rear end 
So if you stop this wheel and the other one's turning and the noise goes away, then you know that your problem is right in here in, the, in this wheel. So then you go to the other side, you know, and you can do the same thing. Now, you can't stop both of the wheels from turning and isolate the motor. So you, when you've got one wheel stopped, see if you can tell, see if you can get closer to figuring out where the noise is coming from. That would be my advice on that. I know it can be frustrating though. Number 15 is from Andrea. Hi, I'm wondering if I would be able to change my golf cart, or I think she means charge my golf cart on a wall box, uh, SENC Pro wall box that I'm going to install at my home. Do you know? Uh, that's very, very unlikely. Uh, very unlikely that your wall box charger is going to be the same voltage and within this within the re recommended amp range for charging your golf cart. You're talking about a charger that charges full size automobiles. Uh, that's uh, very unlikely that, that that's going to work out at all. So definitely would not recommend that. It has to be the same voltage as your golf cart, and it has to be a, for deep cycle batteries, which the, your wall charger is probably for lithium batteries if it's for, if it's for an automobile. So it's a completely different charging system. So I would say no. Okay, number 16, how do I wire a FNR switch? Okay, well, is it the push button kind, like a rocker switch, or is it the mechanical kind where you have to, from you go from forward to reverse, you know, it has a long throw to go in forward and a long throw to go back into reverse. Both of those would be completely different in wiring. Now, keep in mind that if it's the mechanical kind, you need to be really, really, precise and where the wires go so you need to take this is a this is why it's so important to take pictures before you disconnect anything on the golf cart take pictures of the before so that way if you mess up in the after you can come back to the before and, and put things back the way that they were well the forward and reverse switch if it's the mechanical kind is kind of a dangerous thing to be messing around if your batteries are, are, are not disconnected so there's lots of safety things if you're having to rewire the mechanical kind you've got all your powers going through that the mechanical forward and reverse switch now the rocker switch kind it's just a bunch of small wires going to it because the controller is actually what changes the polarity in the motor to make it go from forward to reverse so the rocker switch kind would be easy you just need to get a wiring diagram for either one uh, for your particular car uh, wiring diagrams are available readily available all over the internet for your particular car so you need it's always good to have a a good accurate wiring diagram for your year your electrical system in case problems like this come up number 17 i have a 2014 easy go gas golf cart new battery new fuel pump new air filter when i press the pedal down one time it turns over but it doesn't crank let it up and press down again it cranks and runs fine occasionally not often it will die while driving but pick back up before it stops this is what I would do to to check that situation out that you're describing first thing I would do is crank that car in neutral you know whatever kind of car it is there's going to be a way that you can crank it in neutral if there's not if there turns out there's not a way to crank it in neutral then jack the wheels up off the ground the rear wheels so you can crank it you know on a jack and and raise your seat and watch what is happening with the starter and the starter belt when you hit that gas pedal and it doesn't crank because a lot of times people think I've seen this happen they hit the gas pedal and the car doesn't crank they let off and hit it again and it does crank and it bugs them and they don't know what's going on well I've seen a lot of times that all it is is that their battery may be a little bit weak and they hit the gas pedal and the starter tries to turn but the, the motor is set on the compression ratio and it's a little tough for it to push through that compression ratio and then they let off and try it again and it kind of rolls through and then and then cranks up uh, 
that could be it. And what I'm saying, cranking it in neutral, opening the seat and watching, you'll be able to see it. That's it. Because you'll see your starter try to go and it, and it just couldn't quite make it. Then you let off and do it again. And then it, then it fully rotates and turns the motor over and the car cranks up. So I would take a look at that. Oh, and also check for slipping the, the starter generator slipping on the belt. Like if it's spinning and the belt's not spinning. If because if the belt's not spinning and the starter's uh, spinning inside the belt, the motor's not turning over. So I've seen that before too. Okay, number 18. Can anyone install these? Any special tools needed? Or an alignment after installation, and he's referencing part number SPN0121, which is a shock for a easy go RXV. There are there are no special tools needed, just like just normal tools uh, would be needed uh, for that. Just I don't know what you mean by special. No, there's no special tools that you'd have to order if you have a socket set and some wrenches and, and just, just regular tools, you, you, you would be able to install that. Now, about your alignment question. Because what you're installing is the, is the shock and that, that, is the, that requires removal of your old spindle from your, from your old shock and, and installation of your new spindle onto another mounting point. Anytime that I did any type of front end work or, or replacement, then I always check the alignment because things might not be exactly the same. The tolerances on golf carts aren't quite as tight as they are on high-end automobiles and stuff. So you might, anytime you do front-end work, you need to check the alignment. And this would be, this would, in my opinion, this would be considered front-end work because you're removing the spindle and putting it back on, on another spot. All right, number 19. Is a golf cart motor going into a neutral mode, going down a hill, a sign of a bad motor? Well, I'd like to know what you mean by neutral mode. Now, I'll, I'll try to figure it out here. I'll give you some scenarios. Uh, if, it's a, if you have an electric car, and you go over the top of a hill, let's just say you have a series electrical system and it's an electric car. You go over the top of a hill and you start to go down the other side of the hill and it's a steep hill. A series electrical system will let you free will into eternity. It lets you just, and just go as fast as the hill will uh, allow you to fall. So you have to start riding the brakes. That's in a series car. Now, if you had a regenerative braking car, which is called a, a, a CEPEX system, they have regenerative braking. And that electric car, you go over the top of the hill and you start to go down the other side, doesn't matter what you do, it's not going to let you free wheel into eternity because the motor is going to start holding you back and it, while it's doing that, it's going to put a small amount of power back into your battery pack. And that's where it's, why it's called regenerative braking. That regenerative, the amount of regenerative braking can usually be adjusted more or less depending on how steep of hills there are on the particular golf course that this golf cor cart went to. Uh, now, if your car is a gas car, you go over the top of the hill, you start to go down the other side, the clutches actually act as a regenerative braking feature. They don't, they don't do any type of regenerative braking, but the clutches actually start slowing you down and won't let you free will into eternity. It will let you free will some, but they, the clutches will come into play and along with the rev limiter in your car and they, they'll hold you back also. So pick whichever one of those scenarios fits what you meant by neutral mode. And to the answer of, to your question, is it a sign of a bad motor? No, it's not a sign of a bad motor. So just pick one of those areas and see if your car fits into one of those areas. All right, let's see here. Looks like that's it. As far as the regular questions, let me go over to Facebook and YouTube and see if anybody's there. Let's see, I see Tanya Freeman Billings says hi. Well, that happens to be my sister. Hello, Tanya. Let's see, Joe Brown. I just got a lithium battery. What's the best way to cover the bottom of the battery tray 
on easy go so no water can get to the battery. Uh, I tell you what I have used that is thick plastic. Uh, I don't know what they call it, but it's some thick plastic that can be cut and uh, you can cut it to the size of the place that you need to cover up. And that works really well. And then you can just, you know, screw holes and, and bolt it into the battery tray. Uh, you, can, you can get it at Home Depot. It's like, I think it's a, it's a type of plastic shelving that's used to make shelves. But it works really good. It, hold, it can hold a lot of weight. I know lithium is not, not going to have a lot of weight to it, but it can hold a lot of weight. So that would be what I would use for that. All right, let's see. That looks like about it on Facebook. Let's go over to YouTube and see what we got. William Rizzo says, you can use more amp hours on lithium. High speed magnet will give you 21 miles an hour, but you lose region. Well, I don't see that you have a question there, but yeah, you, you can, on lithium configurations, you can change the amp hour configuration of the pack that you, that you want in order to give you more or less range. You know, you can get as much range as you want. Now, the ones that we sell at Golf Cart Garage, we sell Allied Lithium batteries, and they come they come one at a time. So you can have as much range as you possibly want with Allied. You can adjust your pack to fit your needs. He says the high speed magnet will give you up to 21, but you lose region. Well, yeah, I've heard that too. So that that's that is something to consider. I have a '98 club car, and notice when I hold the gas pedal to the floor. It used to go faster, but I notice it doesn't speed up like it used to. Can this be a problem with the solenoids? No, I wouldn't say that would be a, a solenoid issue uh, there, Kurt. Uh, solenoids are just on-off switches, and, uh, and you, have a, you have the 88 club car, so you got five solenoids. Okay, wait a minute. I see what you're saying now. Uh, it could be a problem with the solenoids, but it could also be a problem with the five micro switches that are associated with those five solenoids. You know, that little silver box that's right up there around where your charging receptacle is on the inside under the seat, there's a silver box. Well, inside that silver box is a whole bunch of micro switches. Every micro switch is responsible for activating those solenoids that are on your car. So there's lots of things that can go wrong in that electrical system. Uh, you could have a micro switch that's gone out. It's not activating one of your solenoids. You could have one of your solenoids that's gone out, which is not allowing you to get your speed. All right, from Chevy Man on Easy Go and Club Car, which is the best gas powered? Well, you have to understand that uh, they are on, they're all in competition with each other, and anytime when you have tight competition like that, they're going to be compatible and comparable. So Easy Go makes an excellent gas car. Club Car makes an excellent gas car. Uh, I, have, I have worked on both. I have driven both uh, many, for many years. And that Club Car FE290 is a really good motor. And that Club Car dual cylinder Robin is a really good motor and really smooth because it's a twin cylinder so they, they, they counterbalance each other. So their Yamaha is a good car. Uh, uh, everything on a Yamaha is Yamaha, including the motor. Yamaha is the only one where the entire golf cart is Yamaha. Like the, the, the frame and everything else is Yamaha and so is the motor. Club car, you know, uses a Kawasaki as far as engine and then uh, Easy Go use a Robin for many, many years for their engine. Now they, they've switched back and forth. They've had Subaru in there for certain years. They've had, they've had Kawasaki in there too. But generally for the number of years that I was involved in the golf cart world, it was a club car used a Kawasaki and Easy Go used a twin cylinder Robin. All right, this is from Eric Boucher. I have a 2004 club car DS and I want to put a new motor in motor and controller and what would you recommend for the most speed and torque oh it's an electric ds thank you for clarifying that i was going to assume that it was eric but uh, yeah thank you for saying that so it's an electric ds this is what i would recommend i would recommend that you go to golf cart garage 
and look at our combo kits for a Club Card DS. Now, on a 2004 Club Card DS, you could have a one of two different type electrical systems. You could have an IQ electrical system, or you could have a series card. So you need to you need to know that. You know, does your car have a run tow switch under the seat? If it does in 2004, and it's a DS, then you have an IQ system. Yours is a 2004 Club Car IQ DS. If it does not have a, have a run tow switch under the seat in 2004 Club Car DS, then you have a series system. So when you're looking at our combo kits that are available, make sure you you look at the, uh, the for the appropriate one for a series or, a, or an IQ. And you can also, like like uh, William Rizzo has pointed out, you can also look at the Nevada system. Uh, that's the 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 probably the highest end system that we sell is the Nevada's conversion. So you could look into that. It just depends on how much money you want to spend, how fast you want to go, how much performance do you need. Let's see here. Well, that looks like it's about it for this week. Thanks everyone for coming. Thanks everyone who joined the live chats on YouTube and Facebook. Thank y'all for doing that. It helps with the algorithm. It, it helps improve the, uh, the weekly session. Uh, I appreciate that. I uh, hope I was able to help people this week. We will be next, be back next week with, uh, some more, some more questions and answers. I'm sure. Cause we get a lot of questions, uh, every day, every day we get questions. Uh, let's see. I, I started doing a weekly Tim tech tip for golf cars. And I think last week I talked about batteries and it's being cold outside and make sure you have your plan together for, for charging your batteries. Uh, well, we're going to add something to that. Like, uh, we have a lot of customers that have, uh, the snowbird people that have a, they have a home down south and they have a home up north and they have a golf cart and they neglect their golf cart for several months. So they are always asking about the best way to charge, you know, the golf carts. That's why we, we always push our charger, the summit Two, that has the storage mode function. Well, always remember this too. If once you got that taken care of and you go to revisit your golf cart, check your tire pressure because those winter months can, your, your tires pressure can get low and electric golf cars do not like to ride around on low tires. I don't know if you've ever tried to push an electric golf cart that had low tires or had one flap. It's very, very difficult. You know, it's a low power vehicle. So they like their tires to be fully aired up to the maximum recommendation. And on a stock tire, it's about 22 PSI if your tires are stock. If your tires are not stock, read on the side of the tire. It, it, it's going to, 99% of all tires is going to say the, what the recommended air pressure on the sidewall of the tire. So look at that. Make sure your tire, your air, your tires are aired up because it will help you with the, the range that you get. It'll help your golf cart run better. Uh, a lot of people ride around with low tires. It bugs me because it, I know how much of a strain that's putting on the electrical system when your tires are low. All right. Well, that looks like it's about it for me. I will see everybody next week. The garage is now closed.